Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, NVIDIA's GeForce GTX 1050 2GB graphics card. What is this? Why should you watch and why should you care? In short, this video is all about the $100 video card market. Should you consider this card? Yes, you should. I'm going to talk about its pros and cons, games and non-gaming use for it, benefits to this specific card, how it compares in the market, and my recommendations on who should and who should not buy this card. Now, please note that links to both Amazon and Newegg will be in the video description below, both specifically for this card as well as the entire market of GTX 1050 cards. Why? Because this may or may not be the right card for you. There are many different 1050s on the market. Uh, Zotac, PNY, MSI all make 1050 cards. They're all fine. Buy the one from the brand you prefer, buy the one that you like the looks of the most, buy the one that's cheapest on the day that you watch this video. At this level of graphics card, I personally don't believe there's any substantial difference between the various cards. It simply comes down to your personal preference for brand, appearance, and price. Now, games. Let's talk about games for a minute because many people buy these cards specifically to play games. I'm going to break games down into two categories. First, casual or esports games. Do you like to play Rocket League, Overwatch, League of Legends, Dota 2, uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, very popular games? All of those games will play perfectly at 1080p or Full HD resolution at 60 plus frames per second with no issues whatsoever on this card. You don't need to spend more than about $100 to $120. You don't need 4 or 6 or 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Uh, video RAM for those kinds of games. They'll play very, very well on this card. And if that's all you want to play, great card. Go buy it. Now, what about the other kinds of games out there? Battlefield 1, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Hitman, Doom, Grand Theft Auto 5. They will all play on this card mostly. If you want a graphics card that will play that list of games at 1080p or Full HD resolution, at ultra detail, at a smooth 60 frames a second, well, this will not do that. It's not powerful enough. You need really the GTX 1060 to be able to do that. The 1050 will just not do it, but it's not meant for it. This is really meant for casual and esports gaming. There will be upcoming benchmark videos on both groups of games coming up in the future. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please click the button beneath the video to subscribe. It doesn't cost anything and you get notifications of when those come out. I will show at what settings you can play the big budget titles. The casual games will play just fine and I'll show some of those just to show that they will. But Battlefield 1, for example, Battlefield 1 will play on this card. Just not at ultra detail, just not at 1080p, but it will. So are you willing to make that compromise? That depends upon you and your budget. If you have the computer and the money for a 1060, you'll get a much better experience in a game like Battlefield 1 than you will over a 1050. It's worth... A 1060 is about $200. This is about $100. But you're also getting almost twice the performance. It's worth it if you've got the money and the computer. Speaking of the computer, let me talk quickly about power consumption. This is a big deal and it's why the card exists. This is a six pin PCI Express power connector. The GTX 1060 requires one. The 1050 does not. And this is a very important point. Many pre-built computers that come in a standard mini tower case about that wide and about this tall generally have between two to 300 watt power supplies. Lenovo, HP, Asus, Acer, Dell. Many of those computers costing between $300 and $500 do not come with a power supply that has one of these power connectors. If you buy a GTX 1060, you either have to use an adapter, which is what this is. This is a two uh, plug, four pin Molex connector adapter to one, pin six, uh, to one six pin PCI Express connector. Can you use this in a pre-built? Yes, that's why they make them. That's why they provide these. But you gotta know what you're doing. You gotta know what your current power supply is. Do you have a 300 watt versus a 200 watt? Because you'll definitely need a 300. A 200 won't be enough. Does your power supply provide enough power on the four pin Molex cables to power the 75 watt six pin connector? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but you gotta know that. Your other option is to change your power supply. 
that's even more complicated and it's way outside the scope of this video to even talk about but I'll say the power supply is cheap. $30 will buy you a nice name brand 400 watt power supply that will solve all your video card supply problems if it will fit in your computer if the cables match the current inside of your computer and if you're okay to completely rewire the inside of your machine for power and keeping in mind that changing out the power supply most definitely will void the warranty on your computer if you still have one of course. If you would like to avoid all of that headache, if you would like to avoid figuring out can I use an adapter, do I have to change my power supply, do I have the right cables, 1050, this does not use any external power supply or external power cables at all. Take the uh, side panel off your computer, take this card, insert it into the slot, screw it in place, put the panel on, turn your computer on, download the latest NVIDIA drivers from NVIDIA.com and you are done. Just make sure that your monitor is plugged into the video card instead of your integrated graphics port and you are off to the races. You don't have to worry about whether or not you have the right cable or the right wattage or the right amperage on the, on the rails for the, for the power connectors. Plug it in, it works. That's why this exists more than anything else. It's extremely easy to install in very basic computers. But it is in fact horsepower limited when it comes to playing big splashy games like, like uh, Grand Theft Auto V, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Battlefield 1, etc. What about the 1050 Ti, you might ask? I'm not going to get into it too much, but let me briefly mention the other cards. The 1050 Ti is the big brother to the 1050. 4 gigabytes of VRAM instead of 2. $30 more expensive, 10 to 15% faster. Should you buy one? If you really want to play Battlefield 1, Rise of the Tomb Raider, yes. If you cannot go to a 1060 because your computer won't take it and you don't want to change out your power supply and you don't want to try to figure out adapters, yes, the 1050 Ti is the fastest available graphics card on the market today that does not need any external power. If you're just playing casual esports games, just get the 1050. Don't, don't spend the money on the 1050 Ti, it's on, unless the price is the same. Now, if you're watching this three months from now from when I posted this video, and there's now a five or $10 price difference for whatever reason between the 1050 Ti and the 1050, yes, buy the 1050 Ti. But on the day I filmed this video, it's $30 difference between the 1050 Ti and the 1050. For Rocket League, Dota 2, League of Legends, Overwatch, don't bother, just buy the 1050, it's just fine. What about AMD's cards? The direct competitor to this is the AMD RX 460. I will have an upcoming comparison um, video on that, and I will do benchmark videos comparing live game performance between the two cards. Let me just say that the RX 460 is generally about 10% less expensive and generally about 10% slower than the 1050. They're very close in overall performance and they're relatively close in price. 10 to $20 separates them and about 10% of performance difference. So that's gaming. Let me talk about non-gaming for just a minute, then we'll open it up and I'll show you what's in the box. Briefly, if you need a graphics card and don't care what it is, and you need that graphics card because you are doing 3D animation, video editing, video rendering, and you need the acceleration of CUDA cores because you use software that supports that from NVIDIA, this certainly works as an option. And it has the benefit of being able to install in just about any computer due to, again, not needing a special power supply. I'm not going to make specific recommendations on software programs because A, it's not my strongest area of expertise, and B, there are hundreds of different programs that will let you edit, render videos, do 3D animation. There's no possible way that I could cover that in a meaningful basis. My general advice is to go to the official message boards or support boards or support form or frequently asked questions section of the company that makes that software program that you're using's website and search for CUDA cores or even ask the question in the message board, will a graphics card, will an NVIDIA graphics card with CUDA cores accelerate this program? What about non-uses of those? Well, that's a great question. Multiple monitor support. Yes, many integrated graphics cards today do provide multiple monitor support, but not every computer provides all the video out ports that you need. Some only provide one, some only provide a single like HDMI port and then like a VGA analog port, which you don't want to use if you don't have to because it's analog and digital is better when it comes to monitors. 
If you want to be able to plug in multiple monitors, adding a graphics card is very beneficial. Now, the first thing somebody's bound to say is, well, if you just need more ports to add monitors, why would you spend $100? There are $35 graphics cards which do that. Yes, there are. A couple of points. Number one, most of the $35 to $50 graphics cards add two digital and one analog port. They have a VGA, a DVI, and a HDMI port. Now, that's fine. If you only want to add two monitors to your computer, you can plug one into the uh, DVI and one into the HDMI, and boom, you've got two digital monitors, you're great. That's for 1080p. What if you couldn't care less about gaming, but instead you want to hook up two or more 4K monitors? The cheap $35 to $50 graphics cards are all, at least when I film this video, HDMI 1.4. They do not support 4K monitors. This does. This has HDMI 2.0 and DisplayPort 1.4. In fact, using daisy chaining off of the DisplayPort 1.4, you could easily hook up three 4K monitors to this graphics card. So if you're simply interested for purposes of displaying lots of information and having multiple 4K monitors, this is one of the least expensive graphics cards that will do it. And then you don't care about the gameplay performance, you just want to be able to display high resolution, beautiful monitors without any trouble. And that's a great use of a card like this. Enough about all that. How about we open this up and take a look, shall we? I will open this up with my handy box cutter. Every time I open a graphics card, it's like Christmas. I will put the plastic in my handy dandy plastic pile over there. It grows and shrinks as I remember to clean it out. Now, each video card that you look at, it would help if I open it from the right side. There we go. There's a right and a wrong side to these boxes. Different cards come in different packaging, but what I will say, is there anything else in this box? Nope. Very basic packaging. But for a $100 graphics card, you know, I keep calling it a $100 card. On the day I filmed this video, this specific card was $120. There are a couple of models at $110. In short order, I fully expect these to be in the $100 price range. You get a book, which doesn't contain anything particularly interesting, except here's a video card. Here's what the ports are. You know, if you've never done this before, I highly suggest you at least take a glance through it because it talks about connections and ports and what to expect. And then here's a user guide, which is written in 26 languages across 71 pages. And then you've got a sticker for the front of your case if you care about such things. It's a nice uh, metallic looking sticker that you can take and stick on your case. It says powered by EVGA if you care. And then we get to the graphics card in bubble wrap. The nicer cards they sell, usually the, uh, um, the 1070s, for example, come in nice blister packs, but these are just in uh, anti-static bags. For a hundred bucks, what do you want? I will say that EVGA, every card comes in this huge bag. No matter what card it is, they use the same bag for everything. Stick that there. Save your packaging, save your box, save your anti-static bag. First of all, if you ever need to send this back for warranty service, EVGA, I love EVGA, I buy a lot of EVGA cards. Excellent customer service, excellent warranty, they stand behind their products. I buy tons of EVGA products because of that. Furthermore, in the future, maybe you want to sell the card. If you want to sell the card and you throw up a listing on eBay, for example, you can usually get $10 or $15 more for a card if you show it with the manual and the bag and the box because what it says is that you care about your stuff and you take care of it. There is plastic on the front of this. Make sure that you peel the plastic off. Let's see if I can get it in one go without tearing it because it'll trap heat. And hey, yay me, I got it in one go. The front is black. And the back is black. It is uh, a black PCB or printed circuit board. It's very simple, very lightweight as well. This does not weigh much at all. But it is an entry level basic graphics card. I will take some of the protectors off. There are covers. Oop, I dropped that one. 
There are covers over each of the ports. Let me briefly talk about the ports. There are three. Display port 1.4, HDMI 2.0, and DVI, dual link DVI-D. This is important. These cards no longer support VGA via the cheap basic connectors that you can plug into the DVI port. Those are like a dollar or two and many video cards come with them. I probably, I should have one here. I've got 20 of them around the office. You can no longer use those. It won't work. However, you can use a VGA monitor with this using an active adapter. For about $10 or so, you can buy an adapter that will plug into the display port and provide you with a VGA. It's about a dongle that long and that gives you a port to plug the VGA into. I mentioned 4K. Display port 1.4 not only supports 4K, it'll drive two 4K monitors if they support daisy chaining, which some do and some don't. And then the HDMI 2.0 port also supports 4K at 60 Hertz. The other benefit here is let's say you don't want to connect this to a monitor, you want to connect it to a television. Not very many TVs have display port but lots of TVs, lots of 4K TVs, have HDMI 2.0. If you're putting together a home media PC and you've got a 4K TV that uses HDMI 2.0, you generally cannot use the $35 to $50 cards because they have HDMI 1.4. They will only drive your TV at 30 hertz and it will slow everything down and make it feel clunky and it's a poor experience. Go, you need, you need 60 hertz. So that's what those ports are. If you look at the top of the card, there is no six pin PCI Express power connector. Normally, it would be right here. You'd have to, ha you have to plug the cable right into the top, but there isn't one because it doesn't need one. Beyond that, it's a very basic, simple card. One of the things I like about EVGA specifically, and of course, buy whichever one you prefer. It doesn't make any difference, but look at the length of the card. The bottom, the end of the uh, PCI Express X16 slot is right here at the edge of the card and the cooler only extends a few millimeters beyond the length of the card. So that will fit into almost anything, almost any pre-built machine from any of the major manufacturers so long as it's a standard uh, width case, a standard mini tower case. If you have a small form factor, an ultra slim case, well, probably no graphics card is going to fit in there except for maybe one of the $35 to $50 graphics cards, but that's a topic for another video. This will fit into almost anything. There are larger versions of the 1050, MSI specifically. I know MSI tries to make all their cards look the same, and MSI makes great graphics cards. This is not a diss against MSI. But if you look at MSI's 1050 and 1050 Ti cards, they've got these big two-fan uh, thick coolers. It's completely unnecessary. Anybody who thinks, if, if you are one of those people who think, is this one fan really enough? That looks kind of dinky. That's not going to be cool enough, is it? Don't I need to buy a two fan card? Okay, no, you don't, and here's why. Intel's i5 processors, the top end i5 processors, are 95 watt CPUs. They'll draw up to 95 watts of power. They're cooled by a little $5 heat sink and fan provided for free in the box. This is less than a 75 watt card. This fan is plenty for an under 75 watt chip. The two fans, the big fancy coolers with all the heat pipes, that's just pretty. That's just marketing. Um, now, it's necessary on 200 watt cards. That's a different story. I'm not talking about high end graphics cards, but this pulls less power than your average i5 chip which comes with a little basic heat sink and fan, and it works just fine. This will actually run cooler on this fan than most i5s will on the Intel stock fan. It's plenty, so you don't have to spend more just to get an extra fan or just to get a more complicated cooling setup at this level of graphics card. So to sum all this up, who should buy this card? Content creators who need CUDA cores but don't need an expensive high-end card, they just simply need a card that provides CUDA cores. People who want to connect multiple 4K monitors or connect this to a 4K television and need an HDMI 2.0 port. And gamers who principally are interested in playing esports or casual games such as Rocket League, Dota 2, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, League of Legends, Overwatch. If that's you, this is a great card. 
Now, AMD's RX 460 is an equally good card, and the two gigabyte version of that I recommend equally as much. Do you prefer the green team of NVIDIA or the red team of AMD? That's a personal preference. They're both fine. They're both great cards. Like this video if you like it. Don't if you don't remember to subscribe to my channel using the big huge red button right below the video. Questions and comments go in the comments box down below. And as always, use the links in my video description to Amazon and Newegg when you go buy it. They both have good deals and good prices and I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.